Welcome back, everybody. I'm James Evan Pilato for MediaMonarchy.com with another installment of your Mary Jane Report. As I come to you, it is pretty much, we can cook, Chris, let's just call it, it's the first day of summer, right? It is. Look at that. I forgot about that. Yeah. So it's it's the first day of summer. I think it's a fantastic time to do the June installment of the Mary Jane Report. We do these once a month. And our buddy, Mr. Chris, he's over there on the East Coast. And I'm James sitting here on the West Coast. And we talk about cannabis news. And it's all on the blog. It's all on the website at maryjane.report, right? Yes. All right. There's a ton. There's, there's, that's, we I were know. saying I've a little bit a little off mic. The last few weeks, Ed, and just, yeah. <laughs> like, damn, there's a, lot of, there's a lot of news we could talk about. I ended up you know, kind of saying that even on my morning shows. It's like, those are just the 10 stories I picked. There are so yep. many more that you could go get. That's right. the danger of you know sometimes getting, getting in too deep with the information overload. So hopefully we can suss out and find some of the good stuff. I mean, a lot of times, dude, these episodes for me feel like a, a, a good news episode in a lot of ways. When I look at the stories, they're the stories that kind of double as what I would talk about on Good News Next Week. Yes, and I always try to add that hashtag whenever I can think of it. I just, sometimes I forget, um, but I could literally put it on almost every one. I just run out of room sometimes because it's a long, it's, it's a, a long, long one. Hashtag. It is a long one. Yeah, I'm sure. But G N N W is probably somebody else's crazy uh, thing. <laughs> yeah, right, right. But uh. <laughs> so let's just kick it off here with some of the stories that you got over on Mary Jane dot report and head up to Canada. And the CBC crammed so many puns into this headline; it's ridiculous. Edmonds airport area banking on massive new marijuana facility taking off so this is huge <laughs> aurora cannabis showed off yes. the construction of its new eight hundred thousand square foot medical marijuana facility with local and provincial politicians betting the grow op will be a boon to business investment near the edmonton international airport so does this tie into it is this, this is basically a massive real estate deal isn't it yes it is um they have a 55,000 square foot facility, I, I believe has been existing for a while now, but they announced this last year. And um, yeah, this is, I think it might be the, there might be another one that's around six or 700,000 that's being built, but this is, I think the biggest uh, facility for growing um, cannabis hemp in the world, I think right next to the airport too. The facility is called Aurora Sky and is located yeah. on federal land with a prime view of the airport's runway. The company is calling it the largest greenhouse of its kind, and it's expected to produce more than 100,000 keys of marijuana a year. That's well, a that lot. doesn't suck. That's a lot. That is a lot. <laughs> uh, they are publicly traded as well, too. Interesting. Now, are they yes. on? Are they on some of the lists that you and I have talked about in the past? Yeah, they're on the uh, the, the Canadian exchange, and I forget the symbol for that. Um, but on the American exchange, it's, it's over the counter, and it's ACBFF, and I think it's trades around a dollar fifty two dollars. Huh. Yeah. Man. You know, I still haven't actually gotten into the things that we had talked about. And I even followed up with you. I was like, okay, I want to actually kind of dip my toe into doing some of this. There is so very much to be done. I haven't I haven't thrown my lot in with the pot stocks yet. Maybe maybe that's a little opportunity to take a tiny bit of that Bitcoin and shift it on over to the cannabis. <laughs> well, we were, yeah, we were talking a little bit off mic about Bitcoin and maybe we'll yeah. talk about that towards the end of this episode or hell, we could just dive into it right now. Yeah. No, I, I was going to say that I, I, we haven't talked about this at all off air at all. And I don't, I don't, you know, I'm just what, this is what I've done last year. I kind of get out of a bunch of, um, you know, the companies that I, I'm, you know, I, I believe in it so much. I'm, I try to invest in, like we've discussed before. So I've actually dumped, you know, most of my holdings into this company. And, and you didn't know this, and I happen to cover other companies too. But of course, why wouldn't I cover a company that I believe in and I invested in? So I, I did put this. Yeah, you know, obviously, I cover maybe once every couple of weeks or so. They have a store, and I put it on. But this is huge. I mean, I, I've picked this company out of many, and they could just they could just fall and just die. But then again, they could be. They, they could be very successful. I really believe what they what they're doing. They have a lot of patience that they supply to, and this is just massive. This 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 is why I I, I invested in them because of this this facility here. And you're talking about Aurora Skies or Aurora, Aurora Cannabis. Uh, Aurora Cannabis. Aurora, yeah, Aurora Sky is the name of, of the this, facility this, they're building. Okay. Yeah. Well, fortunately, everything that we mentioned will be all linked up in the show notes. So when I screw up yeah. the name, it'll be correct in there. So Aurora Cannabis is what you've invested in. Man, that's yeah. Wow. 
it's not a lot, but it's something, you know, it's a few hundred shares and it's just for me what I can afford. And once again, this is, this is just what I've done. I'm not giving financial advice, but this is, uh, I, I like them. I definitely like them. And, you know, I mean, I could turn around and sell it in a couple of months if they pop up or something just to trade a little bit, but I, I don't think so. I, I'm trying to stay long term with, because it's, there's so much of this high frequency trading people doing that. And I feel like our society has lost, you know, what about, you know, long term. And, and if they do, they seem to just do it into Facebook and, Google and, you know, all the big alphabet, all those big companies. And I just feel like I, I honestly, this is where I believe a lot more. The biggest growing business in the world is, you know, hence that's where we're here, James, you know. That's it. They say yep. it's going to be maybe two to three hundred jobs when fully operational. Right now, it's basically greenhouse framings, dirt and lots of heavy machinery. So that's up at the Edmonton Airport area. Yeah. what I mean, what an amazing sight when you're flying in. You know, you feel like you fly into some cities. I, I know I felt like the first time I flew over Chicago, it was just like, this city is nothing but sports stadiums. It was just all over the place. And, you, of course, fly into Vegas, and it's all the lights, and it's all the casinos and all the things. How about you fly into Edmonton, and you're like, oh, my That's God. That's the biggest cannabis facility in the world right there. <laughs> <laughs> and you know one of the pilots will love to say that if you look to yeah. your right. <laughs> You'll see the largest medical marijuana facility in the world. That's Welcome. right. And it will be PC in a few years, likely. You know, well, they're going next year. They're legalizing in almost exactly a year, July 1st, uh, 2018. At least that's what they're trying to get it together. But yeah. PC? Uh, politically correct. Oh, okay. Okay. I'm, I'm, <laughs> well, I'm, I'm a dummy. I'm just like, what? What can what Canadian province is PC? Yeah, right. <laughs> it's like there's they have like a, it's a prince. No, I mean yeah. it's going to be PC for the for the pilot to say, <laughs> look at that people on the plane, kids, everybody of all ages. That's the biggest cannabis, a Mary Jane facility. Where the kids are like, what's Mary Jane, mom? <laughs> well, that's a great discussion to probably have because I mean. <laughs> Well, we could go on to the next story, actually. It's with the, uh, if you want to get to the Lehigh University uh, with autistic children thing. Well, I, I, don't, I, I was okay. just going to make the joke about, you know, at least the things have now forced the change. Yes. Because we probably grew up, let me guess, with our parents probably not being completely forthright about marijuana with us, right? I don't know about um, you. Well, but... I have a different story. No, oh, okay. <laughs> I found it. Yeah, I actually found, uh, I was looking for, I don't know, I was probably looking for, you know, a nudie mag or something like that, a Playboy, and I found a big bag of weed instead. <laughs> oh, damn. Damn. See that? Your parents were cool, Chris. <laughs> <laughs> well, there's a whole there's a whole Patton Oswalt bit about all that stuff about growing oh, up, about yeah. which way your parents might be and how you might end up being. Oh, but shit. all that kind of crazy stuff that was usually I found at my friend Joey's house. That's where the Playboys and first puffs <laughs> of cigarettes and all that bad stuff was. Um, uh. But I I definitely remember, and I feel you know I feel like my dad probably you know at least at a, at a reasonable age if it was coming up in conversation he was probably honest about yeah I did it some back in college. But I, you know, it was this, it was that. I don't do it anymore, and I do not recommend that you do it at all. Um, I think my mom maybe admitted she she got high once and didn't like it and doesn't do it, and she you know doesn't like sort of the loss of control. And I can you know I can now as the years go by, it's like yeah, they're both pretty much telling the truth. Yeah. But it's those funny things and those funny little interactions as a kid. Yeah. I remember this. It was. It's probably the state fair. You know, one of those places you drive a long way to, and then when you get to the big giant parking lot, you're just being guided in, and you drive on down, and someone's flagging you in, and you all park next to each other, next to each other, next to each other. We were starting to get out of the car, and I remember my parents were like, hold on, stay in the car. <laughs> we were like, Certain had smell to, in the air. And that's, and that's years later, I slowly was like, oh... <laughs> there are a bunch of people smoking weed outside the car as soon as we rolled up. And my parents, like, had, you know, had us wait in the car an extra 30, 60 seconds. Oh, <laughs> uh, it's funny. And my mom listens to this sometimes. I, I just send her the link. So, yeah, it's going to be kind of fun. Actually, I also <laughs> remember even before that, I found that um, in my dad's workout bag or whatever it was by accident. <laughs> um, I remember as a kid, I them talking about strawberry rolling papers and then i smelled that funny smell for the first time yeah <laughs> yeah or like like they say on the simpsons it's like it smells like the art teacher's office <laughs> <laughs> so i you know it's that's the amazing part of all these great changes that we're looking at again you know yeah. we, this could double as sort of a, as a good news episode and to remind people you're listening to the june edition of the mary jane report I'm James Evan Pilato from MediaMonarchy.com. We are joined monthly by Mr. Chris of MaryJane.Report. And we'll hop to the next story that you've got over on MaryJane.Report as it goes to Lehigh University as we go from Edmonton to Pennsylvania. 
Yes. They, yep. They, so what's going on over there? Lic- ah, it's licensing. Licensing for the fledgling medical marijuana industry. Lehigh University intends to partner with one of the potential growers in the Lehigh Valley, aha, to study the effect of the drug on children with autism. So this is specifically what Lehigh's doing. Yes. Yes. I figured there was a study coming up. I was, I was like, that's quite interesting. So many people are talking about this. There's Obviously, there's sadly so many autistic children and a lot of them are, you know, you know, I was going to mention too that, um, you know, it's, it's people are, are the, are the case studies and science just has to put it in a, in a context for us to, you know, for the, for the mainstream to believe it. But there's people out there, there's a, there's, you know, testimonials right here in this article, um, about how parents, they can attest to it's really helping their kids. Um, I, 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 I've mentioned to you before, I, but they really don't say exactly what type of delivery they're using, whether it's an edible or mm. how old, you know, it's, it's just curious because if kids are underage and because you've got to be careful with, with the, with that stuff. So I'm just curious, you know, um, how they're doing it, but yeah, th- to have this study like this set up, I thought it was, you know, quite newsworthy. So this is coming from the morning call out of, out of Pennsylvania. So date, yes. Dateline Bethlehem, Pennsylvania, appropriately enough. Yeah. So this is just, huh. They basically say moms are certainly using this actively in the black market, and now it's time to bring everything out into the open. It's time to let the sun shine in. We've seen these kind of stories for for several years in, oh, the, yeah. in the alternative media when it was just kook stuff because it was people <laughs> talking about 9-11 and GMO foods and cannabis but, oil. Yeah, for your kid's autism, right, yeah. And now it is, you know, becoming much more known. And this is, you know, again, I think what's good about these shows is you and I, you know, kind of come at these, come at this from from different angles. You definitely come at it from from the more health angle. And as you've you've said many many times, you hardly ever smoke the stuff. True. Um, yeah, I I just I I wish I could juice it. That's what I really want to do, like kale, like a vegetable. Mm. I mean, tr- I believe that's what it is. And you know, the fact that we've talked about this so many times, but the you know the freedom revolution that's occurring is to stop governments from allowing us to do something that should be a human common law right. You know, to have a plant in your house, and that's where it's coming to. And one of the stories that reflects that that guy in Tampa. We'll get to it in a little bit, but how he's sick, and you know, he shouldn't have to be sick, but he is sick, and he wants to grow his own plants. And and they're saying, you know, it's just it's to getting permission from the people that you're paying their salaries is absolutely is you know. So this is the the peaceful you know fight here. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. But if you want, I could, there's one. If you I don't know if you can see this. You scroll down. Um, uh, one of the examples is uh, a mom in Montgomery County. Her name is Erica Daniels. She just starts talking about how um, her son could be sidetracked when anxiety associated with his autism spectrum disorder takes over. Uh, She tried giving him prescription medication, diet changes, herbs, and uh, hyperbaric uh, oxygen chamber, and nothing made an I know, right? Nothing made an impact. And then it says... um, uh, then she tried cannabis, and the first time he took it, he curled up with it, with her and watched uh, where the wild things are. And he and basically, since he's been on it, uh, he's been a, you know almost anxiety free. Well, and it even kind of points out he curled up with his mother to watch the entire film, the entire film where yes, the wild things you. are, so that it, you know it's like a kid was able to sit down through a whole film. Yes, that's mm. I, and I have a friend, one of my best friends, and his son is in that. You know, and we're, you know, we're trying to figure out how we can get him because we think it would help. We just have to find the right, you know, uh, he actually was really cool. He had, I was there a couple weeks ago and he had a CBD tincture bottle he got from the local health food store. I I mean, here I am, Mr. You know, obviously I'm a musician. I have other aspects of my life. And, but I, I was shocked that he went to the, the local health food store and he can get CBD, you know, extract and he was taking it for himself. And obviously it's, you know, non uh, psychoactive. And I was just like, yes, you know, that's great. You know? So the two actually, and I was going to say, this is the counterpart. There's part of me. I've, I've probably thought about it off mic and then we get on and I, dude, I spaced it. I forgot to talk about it, man. But to mention (laughs) actually, even just some of the strains that, that, uh, I'm having at the moment. So I've been smoking on what's called Pitbull, which is a Indica, (laughs) um, and we can put nice. the Leafly, the Leafly links in there, which is it is a super handy website, Leafly.com. Oh, shows they you all do. The, they have all the strains all on there, the right? All the strains, that's all the, the stuff. It's just kind yeah. of it's the weed Wikipedia essentially. And your some of your local dispensaries and stores and recreational stores will be kind of tied in. And even some of the rec stores we've gone into here in Portland, 
you know, hey, if you, you know, if you like us or do whatever on the site, you know, you'll get maybe, you know, a free, a free pre-roll. And that's the other one, because actually this Pitbull is is 19.65% THC, and it's, a, wow. you know, primarily an indica. The other thing I picked up, actually, for my wife is from a place called Madrone Farms, and they put them in these little three-pack pre-rolls. You know, mm. it's, again, the longtime cigarette smoker that I used to be, which part of me, you know, that kind of, I guess this appeals to me in a way. So there are three pre-rolled of what is essentially an all-CBD remedy. CBD, it's a 9.46%, and the THC is basically zero. Nice. Now, is that Pitbull, or was that's the other one you that's said? That's the other one. That's Remedy. Which is- Remedy, they call it. And I don't know oh, if that's, that's a, a cool name. If that's their own. Let's search this out real quick. But yeah, that's, that's a, I, I, yeah. I've, I've wanted to kind of include on these shows a regular yeah. sort of, you know, here are the strains I'm trying out right now. I'm sure people in the comments and in the other spots will be able to talk about some of their strains as well. So as I inject a little bit of that. <laughs> no, that was that was great. Yeah, we head down to Tampa. So why don't you dive into this one? Um, as, as I'll dive into some pit bull. <laughs> Let's see. Um, <laughs> well, it's basically, basically a, well, you yeah, know, it's entrepreneur. Basically, yeah, like I said before, there's a, there's a guy a, in, in Tampa. Yeah. And he's, he's got a uh, really bad lung cancer and he wants to grow plants and he's taking them to court. I mean, this is what you have to do. Fight them in the courts over this. And that's what he's doing here. Um, uh, once again, it's, it's something we really shouldn't have to do, but if, if you have to, you know, to do so to, for him to do this and, and more cases that happen like this, then, then you have reference in the future in court cases. Ah, the, the court case of da, 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 da in Tampa with his, you know, he was able to do it. So, you know, but I mean, it's just something, um, we shouldn't have to do this, but he has to, which is sad right now, but, uh, we'll, we'll find out. I want to watch this story and see how, you know, this is happening all over the world. You know, if the people aren't getting arrested for it, um, but obviously that's, we are, we are, we, things have shifted, you know. Joe Redner, Tampa's Joe Redner. outspoken strip club entrepreneur and a lung cancer patient is one of the first to challenge Florida's state medical marijuana laws in court. Less than two weeks after lawmakers put in place new laws governing growing, manufacturing, and selling medical marijuana, Redner's lawsuits claim, lawsuit claims the state is not following the will of the public, which voted overwhelmingly last year to legalize it by passing a constitutional amendment. Specifically, Redner wants to grow his own plants. That's it right there. That so is just, yeah. This could be, this could be a great precedent setting kind of case. Yeah. And surely so. lots of precedent setting cases are all probably rolling out, you know, rolling out all over the place. Oh, and actually this, uh, this link over on tampabay.com looks like they've even got an interview, a couple minute thing with Tampa's yep. Joe Redner. So again, yeah, he's the video know, right in the top of the page. Yeah. Yeah. So there's always more to, to go research in all these show notes. Oh, Man, please. Yeah. So I, I mentioned to you off mic, I'm I'm coming up on the big four O coming up in this <laughs> summer and I'm I'm you know, I'm I'm adjusting, I'm 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 dealing with it. <laughs> so of course, you know, there's a little you're you're just a smidge older than me, I think. I just kind of missed Carl Sagan, as it were. Now I know he he lived for, you know, several I think he maybe lived until two thousand nine. But I'm just yeah. a, like a, just a little young enough to where Carl Sagan wasn't quite in my you know pop. He wasn't in mine sphere. either. No? Actually, I just I just saw, I just I he was a big cannabis hemp activist, and I kind of I, I remembered as a kid hearing the billions upon billions, you know, and and it was <laughs> it carried through for many, you know, in the '90s. I think I heard it, and um, yeah, he's I just I, I just like his quotes, and I just happened to you know, and I saw a story on him today, and he just he says some really uh, really cool thing. Do you mind if I just read it here? Please do. Yeah. Yes, yes. So you can have some more. You can <laughs> bond. You can bond with Pitbull. <laughs> um, or he says about music, and I'm a musician, so I just love this. So here we go. Quote unquote. A very similar improvement in my appreciation of music has occurred with cannabis. For the first time, I've been able to hear the separate parts of a three-part harmony and the richness of the counterpoint. I have since discovered that professional musicians can easily keep many separate parts going simultaneously in their heads but this was the first time for me end quote and uh and it's true because i actually 20 years ago i had had taken some lucy in the sky with diamonds a very small piece i have a heart thing so i really never did but i knew it was clean from a very reliable friend so i had a little bit of that and i had a little bit of cannabis and i listened to uh it was raul and the kings of spain by tears for fears oh wow 
Do you know that? I, I don't know it specifically, but no, I mean, yeah. Go you ahead. have to listen to it. There's, there's, that was Roland Orzabel went off on his own after they kind of went, they split. And, uh, you know, I, tears are they're just, you know, great songwriters. And, you know, if some people you know, don't like it, but I just think they're great. But, 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 but basically what I'm trying to say is I literally, ever since I did that, I, I was sitting American Indian style on my bed and I felt like I was lifted up off the bed. And, and, and James, it was, it, it was, it was a five minute song. And I, it felt like hours. And I literally, ever since that point, with those headphones on, as a musician, I could hear the separation of every instrument, you know, intertwining, but but completely separate, like they were happening in different, you know, zones or something. And ever since then, when I produce music, I work on it, I've just went to a whole other level as far as, you know, finding where the guitar sits, the synth will sit, where the bass, the, you know, drums and what you can do this with, you know, there's, there's, it's an art form as far as the mix as well. And, and what level, you know, I have to tell you, you're, you know, you're, you're into the, the music and the DJ and everything. And, and so, I mean, it, but I don't ever want to do that again. The <laughs> Lucy's Sky Diamonds. I don't, I don't need to. And I, and I, and I like, I don't really do anything. And that was just a couple of times, but it did change my life as far as, you know, um, but that's, he, that's why I thought what he said, that's what drew me into this whole story here, his quote right there about wow. music. So I went and actually, you, you maybe didn't hear it in your headphones there. I brought up a little bit of Raul and the Kings of oh, Spain. Oh, that's I, I, the song. I, I, kept yeah, it, yeah. I kept it very low because then the, uh, so the YouTube monsters Put won't, some headphones won't on and listen to that. His voice is so powerful and the music is so unique and the dynamics up and down, it's just a, it's a really a, a unique piece of art. It really is. And maybe I'm, I'm being a little bit, you know, uh, I'm, I, I'm being a little bit, you know, how, how great it was because of what happened with my experience with it. He happened to be there, but I was already loving that as it was and I, that took me to a whole other level and, uh, you know. Well, I actually, so I I had that in my in my big old digital jukebox. I didn't that when you said the name, it didn't ring a bell. So I was thinking it was something earlier, but no, it's their '95 album. And wow. I actually had because um, I I was into Elemental, the record right before that. Uh, from, That's right, yeah, from '93. Yeah. But yeah, was it still? It was still just Roland Orzabal by that point. Kurt Smith wasn't back in the group. Yeah, and I listened to it well after. I think it was late night, maybe early two thousands. This is when I listened to it, so it was after the fact. But yeah, it was Roland Orzabal, and I don't know the other guy's name in the band. What's his name? The, Kurt, the two of them. There I think was, it was Kurt Smith. Yes, uh, they had split, and this was him. I think he still had the name. Was going under Tears for Fears. I could be wrong, but I'm pretty sure this was just Roland Orzabal, and that was doing. He was doing his thing, you know, and that's what that was. Huh. Well, we'll include that stuff in the show notes as well yeah, as we go yeah, from yeah. Carl Sagan to Tears for Fears. <laughs> so, man, these half hours always pretty much fly by. So if we could only have, you know, one other kind of main story to talk about, it goes to what's called Potcoin and Dennis Rodman's trip to North Korea. This is just weird upon weird upon weird because yeah. Dennis Rodman in and of itself is already an odd enough character. And then you take it to... Kim Jong Un and North Korea takes it to an extra b bizarre level, and then to say, well, the whole thing was funded by a digital currency from the cannabis industry. Yeah, and I, I saw this story, and I, at first I was, I, I, you know, I think this story. I don't know. I did want to say, I don't want to say that they're wrong, but I thought it popped at first because it was it just hovers around ten cents. I've been watching it for you know a while now, and and all of a sudden it went up to seventeen, eighteen cents. So it might have popped because of it. Then maybe then maybe people thought about it. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> or or if I, I maybe I didn't see it and, and I missed it, and maybe it, it was it had popped before this news came out, and then this news brought it back down again. I don't know exactly. So I've know. got from potcoin.com. So actually, I don't know if you have any links on your own site, but I just brought up what looks to basically be their press release from June 13th. Hall of Famer and former NBA bad boy Dennis Rodman is headed back to North Korea on Tuesday, June 12th, 2017, thanks to the community-based cryptocurrency for legalized marijuana potcoin. Uh, Dennis made his first visit. Dennis, I just, you know, I just call him Dennis. <laughs> February 2013, he's visited the country four times and is known to be a trusted confidant of Supreme Leader Kim Jong-un. Dennis Rodman, da 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 da. This is yeah. It's just, for, <laughs> I was, yeah. You know, you start to go down the YouTube hole, and of course, I'm always looking for for parts and pieces of you know things to use in the media monarchy kingdom. I found a video that I'll probably play at some point this week that they just call Trump Wave. And if you're familiar with what Vapor Wave is, it's this sort of 80s nostalgic mall kind of techno pop thing, and there's lots ah. of videos and things online. But it's just, you know, all the reminding things that, you know, how long Donald Trump has been in sort of the, the public media meme sphere for a long, long time. 
Dennis Rodman is that similar. So it's, I'm just, it's just such a weird ass time. It's such a strange time of everything. It seems. Yeah. Just, it's a little, little like dream esque where you feel like, was that a dream? Is that, did I really read that? Um, you know, I'm James, I'm looking at the chart and yeah, it was already up right on June 13th. And, and then <laughs> I guess that news came out and it, it right by the 15th that, yeah, it was up to about 16 cents, 17 cents and it popped down to, you know, to 12 cents again, you know, but, uh, um, yeah, but you know, I, if we have a, a couple minutes left, I did, you know, we were talking about this off air and I, you know, I have reservations a little bit, but part of me just loves the, the digital revolution of it. But the other part of me is kind of like, well, you can just own Bitcoin and any of these pot stores across the country that are trying, you know, they can't deal with ca- uh, the banks, they're only cash, they can kind of transfer it and, and they could just do, use a Bitcoin. But obviously the, boy, the pot coin is, is specialized and there's a couple other ones. There's a couple different hemp coins, mm-hmm. a cannabis coin, but the pot coin seems to be the, at the top of the list right now. But well, I think what you're what you're kind of getting at is the the is the worry of you know is this what if what if digital currency just ties in for a way for the powers that shouldn't be to trick us into going cashless yep. while we thought it was the thing to get away from them it was the thing to fall right into their clutches. I, exactly, that's what it, that's what I'm thinking about, and it, the whole you know a lot of the independent media embrace it, um, but. You know, and even some of them say, "I oh, even if it was DARPA or the CIA or or some entity like that that created it, it's just well, we could still trade it and da 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 da, and you know, balance other, you know, the variety, the spice, the variety of currencies, I guess. But it just makes me wonder if that little coin on the cover of the Economist magazine, 1988, was a Bitcoin. <laughs> and they're saying that you know it's going to be cashless, and this is what's going to kind of crush currencies. That was a Rothschild, you know, obviously a Rothschild little magazine. So you know, I just you know, it just makes me question. You know, obviously it goes deeper than this, but I'm just kind of my bullet points here on it are you know just just questioning a little bit but i i think it's great though you know the whole premise of it and to get away if it is if it isn't that and it is to get away from the banking system then you know but we'll we'll see we'll see how how things turn out you know i had to bring up the cover yeah economist that's the fame 1988 get yep. ready get ready for a world currency and it basically has the phoenix kind of rising out of the ashes of all the burning various other you know, world dollars, paper dollars. Yeah, and predicting that 2018 is when this, you know, new currency, world currency or whatever it is, is going to kind of take over. But you just summed it up a minute ago by saying that that would be like the biggest psyop. And I've been thinking this from the beginning, but I wish I would have gotten into it earlier, even just for <laughs> investing trading purposes, you know. But it's, uh, yeah, it's it's very tough to figure it out, you know, um, what, what it is. But, but it is, I just love the, you know, you know, at least we're we're doing here. We're not, you know, we're covering the news. Potcoin, it's out there. It's, you know, you could use Bitcoin to get it, you know, so. <laughs> huh. Well, and the site that popped up for me just in the quick start page search is so- Socioeconomics History Blog that has this post. And on their sidebar, they have something about September 23rd, 2017. I'm like, oh, shit, that's my wife's birthday. Oh, wow. Some that once in 7,000 years, September. Okay. So uh, <laughs> that files under a different media. That's yeah, a whole yeah, other yeah, media monarchy <laughs> show. So, buddy, tell people the best way they can find and follow your work and support you. On Twitter, I'm at Mary Jane Report, and it's the actual address. I'm still on the, the Google blogspot. is maryjanereport.blogspot.com, but I did um, attain the URL uh, www.maryjane.report. So a lot of people don't they see that. What does that mean? You know, like it's a little confusing. But yeah, it's not a dot com, it's a dot report. So I fit right in with the name, so I grabbed it, you know. Well, it's best to diversify. So whether we're talking about yes. your own internet real estate or real real estate up in Edmonton or whether or not you get into cryptocurrency, yeah, there's a lot of questions, a lot of man, a lot there's of things options. swirling around. Yeah, there's options, which is good. That's the good news next week on that one. <laughs> there you go. Man, I appreciate you doing this once a month. Um, I, my pleasure. I hope you do well, man. Mr. Chris, yep. Mary Jane Report, thanks so much. All right, Jane. You're listening to Media Monarchy with James Evan Filato. Since 2005, Media Monarchy has covered the real news about politics, health, technology, and the occult, all remixed with music and media that matters. Go to MediaMonarchy.com support and become a monthly subscriber so you can help keep independent, non-commercial, alternative media going and growing. Thanks.